introducing my mum, Vina V. I love you, mummy. Hey, beautiful. This is Vina V, and welcome to the 28th episode of the Mum to Millionaire podcast, helping you create a successful business and incredible life for your children. On the show today, I'm so excited. We've got a mum of one to a beautiful, she is so gorgeous, uh, little girl. She started blogging back in 2005. So, happy 10 year blogging anniversary. Wow. <laughs> okay. Thank you. She is uh, also the founder of Flea Enterprises, which is home to the highly successful TOTS 100 and the Mad Blog Awards. Please welcome to the show, Sally Whittle. Thank you. Thank you. I love your house, by the way. If anyone's actually uh, listening to the podcast, you can't see this, but I will put a clip over on the YouTube channel. It's very clean. My house is like mess. Shall I tell you a secret, (laughs) Vina? The cleaners came yesterday. Ah, okay. So (laughs) it'll look like this for about two days. And then, okay. and then chaos maybe we'll takes- visit you again in two days and see if it's uh, still yeah. like that. Uh, Sally is here. She's going to talk about what it takes to turn a blog into a business. Now, Sally, there's just so much advice out there, isn't there? Everyone's mm. telling you, you must have a blog. But how do we actually, you know, turn this blog into a business? Because this, you know, Mum to Millionaire is all about helping mums in business. So, a lot of people might have a traditional business. It might be a cake shop. It might be an mm-hmm. accountancy. And everyone's saying, you know, slap a blog on there. How, I mean, we can take this from two different angles. Number one, how should they approach that? But number yep. two, how can they also make that blog into kind of another business and, you know, create money from that at the same time? Okay, that's. I think that there are two really important questions. If you're looking to make money online through a blog, I think, first of all, you want to think about, where do I want to be? What message do I want to be putting out? What brand do I want to be part of? Because there's no point. You could go out there and you could make lots and lots of money doing reviews of beauty products. But if that isn't where your interest is and that's not going to fulfill your wider business aims, then there's no point in doing that. So when I talk to somebody, I always say, okay, well, what kind of things do you enjoy doing? Do you enjoy doing crafting? Do you enjoy baking? Are you an accountant who's got an amazing amount of knowledge about tax returns? And so look at what you're interested in and what you're passionate about and look for a way to monetize that. And then I think regardless of what sector you're going to operate in, I think the really good money online comes from content. And I think, you know, there's there's this tendency sometimes, particularly with businesses, to think, well, I'm just going to write an article about what I know. And it's kind of like, well, that's great. And that would work beautifully in a magazine. My background's in magazines and that might work great. But online, you've really got to think about content and shareability and what can I create that people can easily consume online that's useful to them? How's it going to help them have a happier day or to do something more quickly? Um, I know when I used to be in journalism, we used to talk a lot about faster, cheaper, better. That what you should be producing should be helping somebody to do something one of those three ways. I mean, what are, I really want to kind of get down and dirty here what are the hard facts about this I mean because not everyone can be turn a normal kind of I think a lot of mums start just a blog maybe talking about that pregnancy I mean you you know it all you met Mm. probably hundreds even thousands of them you know the people who are right at the top of their game in terms of blogging what makes them different and how have they managed to turn it into a business I mean Mm -hmm. because I I think when we look at particularly with the women who've got Um, family focused blogs and they're not all necessarily just mummy blogs they might be food or craft or lifestyle or whatever it may be I think they've gone down one of two routes so I think you either take your blog and you say okay I'm going to treat this entirely as a business I'm going to treat this as a content platform and I'm effectively going to sell advertorial to brands and on that level you need to decide what level do you want to be at. So in the same way, if you're a magazine, you might be a chat or a take a break magazine, or you might be a Vogue or a Tatler, you need to pitch appropriately. So maybe you're going to go for really, really high quality photography, amazing professional design, and you're going to pitch only to really high end brands. And you might only do 12 paid campaigns a year, but each of those campaigns is worth five grand. Great. But you might go the other way and say, okay, well, I'm going to do cheap and cheerful product reviews, paid links, sponsored posts at 40, 50 pounds a time, but I'm going to do five of those a day. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any one of those routes is necessarily better than the other. I think, you know, you just need to understand where your customer base is and build a product where those customers want to be. 
So is it really just having, I mean, the first step is just really having that clear goal from the beginning. Like, why are you blogging in the first place? Yeah, but I also think, I always think like the first six months, I see lots of bloggers and they start a blog and it's like month two and they come and register with Tots 100 and they email us and say, I really, really want to work with brands. And I kind of think, just enjoy those first six months of trying out different sorts of content. You know, don't set yourself up as a luxury, high-end fashion blogger. And then three months later, you find out that you hate Photoshop, you can't stand Polyvore, and actually it takes all the fun out of it because you're trying to do these stupid graphics and maybe that's not fun. So I always think take advantage of those early months when nobody's reading your blog yeah. apart from your best friend and your stalker ex-boyfriend. <laughs> And just like try different stuff, you know, do something that doesn't work or try writing in a different style and just kind of find your own voice. And I think once you've done that and you've spent that time working out, okay, this is what's easy for me, because when you find something that feels natural, it will be a lot easier for you to produce regular content. Mm. It's not going to feel like such a chore. You don't want to be that person who's got to sit and spend half a day writing a blog post because it's just not the kind of thing that you would naturally gab on about anyway. And in an ideal world, that's what you want to do. It's going to make your life a lot easier. And if you have got to that stage, you should really stop blogging. That's what happened yeah. to me. I had a pregnancy blog and it got to about five years and I thought, I hate doing this. <laughs> what is the point? I was literally sat there like, so I, I just killed it. And that's when I used, a year later, then I started Mum to Millionaire. And I'm so passionate about this, mm. but I can't, I get up, I'm like, yes, I'm going to work on this. I would, before when I had the pregnancy blog, I was like, oh my, it, it turns into a chore. And yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned that because as soon as it turns into a chore, there is no point doing it. Well, I think it's are, really you know. tempting. You can look at other people who are successful. I was chatting with a friend about this this week and saying, there's one particular blog in our community and they've started craft blogging and their traffic has gone absolutely through the roof crazy crazy numbers and she gets like 25 times more traffic than my blog does and I was like the number of times I've thought I really should try and make something out of a toilet roll tube but I would hate it I would be miserable and it would be rubbish because I'm not gifted so I kind of have to accept the things that I write about are the things that if I wasn't writing that post I'd probably be ringing up my best friend and saying oh my god you wouldn't believe what happened or did you watch this stupid tv show is it really inappropriate to have a crush on him and that kind of thing so you're writing the stuff that you'd be talking about anyway that you'd be sharing anyway (laughs) I'm just imagining Sally we're just looking at this toilet roll thinking how can I do something it's just it wouldn't end well (laughs) wouldn't end well at all never going to be a craft blogger never going to be a food blogger (laughs) and there may be fortunes to be made but I'm going to have to miss out (laughs) 